stuff. It is possible to have way too much stuff. And the problem of having too much stuff is that sometimes you've got too much choice. Here, I've got a Godox roller case full of stuff. But the reality is I only need probably 10% of what's actually in this bag to take 90% of my photos. And really, all I need is a 24 to 105 lens and a full frame camera body, or equivalent of course, and that will do the majority of what I need it to do. So the rest of the stuff is surplus to requirements. And to prove this, I've come to Brimham Rocks in North Yorkshire, and today I'm gonna to go out armed with just the Panasonic S5 II and the Panasonic 24 to 105 lens, and I'm gonna go out for a day shooting landscape photography. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you will agree that really all you need is a 24 to 105 lens. As you will have just seen from those few photos, I'm a great fan of the versatility of a 24 to 105 mm lens. Basically, you're covering everything from a 24 mm wide angle right up to a sort of short telephoto at 105 mm which is like just such an incredible versatile range to have in one single lens. You can just cover so many different subjects with it. Now, for example, this shot I'm taking now, I've just framed up, and I'm shooting a 24 mm because the subject is large to say the least. But I managed to get nice and close, I'm getting foreground interest in. I'm getting everything in, I'm shooting in monochrome because the situation is suited. And I'll put the shot up now for you. Well the weather's a little bit changeable today, to say the least. It's forecasted for sunny intervals, that's what we get in. And obviously a natural reaction I have is as soon as it gets a little bit overcast is to try and find a bit of woodland. And honestly I'm blessed in this woodland because the rocks are covered in this, this sort of moss, which is just incredibly vibrant green. It's, it's just absolutely beautiful. So I'm just letting the sun go in. I'm just going to take the shot now. And really what I've tried to do is just use these big rocks as my foreground interest with boatloads of colouring. And then it doesn't really matter so much about the sky and everything behind because we've got that nice vibrant greens going on and uh, it just lifts the whole scene. And I think as soon as the sun starts comes out like it is now, I'm going to take it again just in case. I think it just gets a little bit too contrasty at that point. But it's a beautiful location. Somewhere, though, if you watch my video, I think I did last year when I was shooting with the Holger here, and I shot in black and white, and really, when you've got a scene like this, it does cry out for a bit of colour. But of course, that's the beauty of digital, isn't it? You can do both. You don't have to change cameras or film. But yeah, definitely worse ways to spend a day. So I thought it would be interesting to show you exactly how different the focal lengths are. And what I'm going to do is basically we're going to go through the effective prime equivalence on this one lens. So I'm going to start off with the 105mm lens. And that's that shot. Then I'll go to 85mm, which obviously is a classic portrait focal length. Then we go to 70mm, which would be the top end of your normal 24 to 70 zoom as such. Then we'll go to the classic 50mm prime equivalent, so-called focal length that basically mimics human eye. 35mm, which is my preferred documentary focal length as such. Um, a little bit wide, but not too wide. Then finally, 24mm. And as you can see, I'm covering so many different focal lengths in this one single lens, which means I don't have to carry loads of other gear. You know, you can have too much stuff. So I've slightly changed my viewpoint. I've switched it back to monochrome D. And I'm shooting 24 mil. 
and I think this should be a really nice shot. And what I'm really doing at the moment is I'm sort of wrecking out locations for later if the sun does come out. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to get some decent light later. But I'm going to make the most of this time just trying to wreck out the viewpoints I want to take. I'm not sure if you can see. But the sun's made an appearance. Which obviously is an added bonus as I haven't packed my camera away. Lovely. I'm going to try and make the most of this. So I just went back to my van and had a bite to eat. And uh, that consisted of a can of soup. Now, annoyingly, this soup didn't have one of those ring pulls on it to open it, so I had to resort to a can opener. Now, the only can opener I have is on my Swiss Army knife. And so it then suddenly struck me that that's what's so good about the 24 to 105 mil lens. It's the Swiss Army knife equivalent of a lens. It just does so many different things. Now, to put this into context, if I'm shooting a wedding, 90% of those shots probably are taken with my 24 to 105, simply because I can use it for the big group shots, so shooting 24 mil. I can use it for more sort of intimate focal lengths, such as your 50 mil and your 70 mil. And I've also got the 105 mil lens if I want to do details and stuff like that. So really, it's just, it's an incredibly versatile lens. If weddings are not your thing, but you do like shooting people, then really, if you put it to the sort of 85 to 105 reach, it's a wonderful portrait lens. And obviously, if you want to shoot big vistas, then 24 mil is, in my opinion, the perfect focal length. So yeah. I am a huge fan of the 24 to 105 lens. So I'm hoping now, I'm not sure if you can see behind me, the sun's trying to make an appearance. I've got a couple of hours to sunset. I've reckoned out my locations. So really it's a case of finding myself that perfect viewpoint and just waiting. But honestly guys, Brimham Rocks is just an incredible location for landscape photography. Just look at these rocks. They really remind me of the sort of devil's marbles in Australia. Uh, perhaps a bit cooler. We definitely haven't got the outback heat here. I don't think North Yorkshire is renowned for outback heat. But there's just so many different possibilities of different viewpoints. Definitely a landscape photographer's paradise. This is such an amazing location. I'm not sure whether I'm going to get any light tonight, to be honest. I'm, uh, I've really got my doubts, as you can probably hear by that wind. Apologies in advance. But I'm going to take you to the edge so you can see what's happening out towards the valley. Because normally, you'd get some nice views out towards the hills. But I'm just going on the uh, viewpoint now, so it is going to be a little bit exposed. Apologies for not looking, looking at you. I'm just trying to sort of not fall over, really. But there's the valley. Which to my eyes looks a little bit nasty. So I'm, I'm not really at the moment not sure this is going to happen. But I'm going to hang around and hopefully catch up with you very soon. Right, we just had a quick break in the light. Um, for some reason, the video camera didn't work. I do apologise, you missed the moment, but I, I think I've got one. Maybe not perfect, but I'm, I'm gonna put it up now. I, I think the light's nice. 
I'm, I'm hoping the composition's okay. I, I did it really quick. Right, so I think that goes to show that you should never write off a shoot basically until the sun's gone in. It's beyond a big bank of cloud again, but to be honest, I didn't think it was going to clear then, so I'm, I'm just going to hang on and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. Well, guys, I don't think it's going to happen. Much to my disappointment, I've got quite a nice little shot here, which I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to put it up anyway. Uh, I'll do it as a monochrome conversion. I, but I was really hoping for light, but I think looking that way, I think the chances now are, are have pretty much gone. And the forecast is for this to happen, so I think I'm going to have to call it a day, which is a, it's a, it's a real shame, but... As you all know from these videos, this does happen. It's just the nature of landscape photography, I think. But I've got a couple of shots, so... I'm happy. It would have been nice to get some more. But it's somewhere I can return to. It'd be nice to come back maybe in the winter. But yeah, what I did find when the light was changing, I, I took a shot looking that way. And then basically I swung straight round to take a shot behind me. And obviously I had to change the focal length when I was doing that. And to be honest, this is where a zoom lens comes into its own because you can just quickly change and quickly recompose and sort of get something in changing light, which must have only happened for a couple of minutes maybe this light lasted, if that, to be honest. But yeah, it's good. I think it's, uh, I'm pleased with my trip. But I think if nothing else, I think it does go to show that 24 to 105 can actually be really useful for these sort of scenarios. So yeah. Is it the only lens you need? To be honest, probably yes. There has been times, like when I wish, probably now really, when I wish I had something a little bit wider. But that's always going to be the case. And there's always going to be a case when you wish you had a bit more zoom. But I think really you can work around 24 to 105 and get most things that you want to get. And I think really all in all, that's the key of the 24 to 105 lens. The Swiss army of the lens world. So yeah. I wouldn't be without mine and I hope you've got something from this. I hope you've, if you considered getting a 24 to 105, I hope you can now understand some of the merits of the lens. Yes, it's not the perfect all rounder, but I don't think any lens will be, but it's very close, you know, and um, yeah, it'll produce the results and that's really all that matters. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, maybe give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you again soon for another one. Thanks for watching.